Right, ready to go. Right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Against All Odds and I am super, super excited today to welcome my next guest. I've had a journey with being, growing up with alcohol and I've been in a relationship where alcohol is a problem. So like I've always said, I always get guests on purely selfish reasons because I love learning about this. So I'm happy to welcome Marcus James sober coach how are you my lovely oh amazing and thank you ever so much for having me i'm super excited for this one i you've helped me so much recently and yeah i'm super excited to be invited on and to share the knowledge that i have or yeah. don't have <laughs> yeah. but just just being amazing yeah i'm i'm super excited thank, thank you so much for having me on no problem i just want to tell everybody that i'm so proud of you because you've just run a marathon your fourth marathon at the weekend so i feel very grateful that you're sat here right now uh, I, I can only be sitting down i can't stand up so uh, you've got me in the best position possible i'm sort of i'm i'm hurting but i'm proud like yeah I've, i feel quite proud well i feel very proud this training hasn't been great training has been hard <laughs> and i think that the the marathon is like the let's just say it's the victory lap but the 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 all the training and hard work you know the the early mornings the long sunday runs the cold five o'clock get ups you know no one sees that they just see this beautiful glossy picture that i've put on a weekend of, of me and a uh with a medal um, yeah, yeah. yeah i think that's i think that's life as well right everyone sees Again, I'm I'm already going off on the tangent, which is brilliant. Um, yeah. that, but that's what everyone sees, right? On like on our socials, that every and I think because we're the the people we hang around with, they we see every part of that, every yeah. element. But like all we do normally see is everyone's, um, you know, glossy pictures and and the happy times. But you know, they yeah. I suppose it's all about the journey, right? Absolutely, mate. And you've been on a journey yeah. and I'm also proud of you for that. So you you coach people in being sober, basically. Yeah. In a nutshell. It's absolutely fantastic. But I always start with when people when I see people impacting others like you do, there's always a big reason why something's happened that's triggered that. And what was it for you? Yeah, I suppose it was a culmination of, of of a lot of things, but the main thing was a a divorce. Um, I think we spoke offline about um, like your brain uh, apt with with the queen of the brain on here. Like it's very apt that our brain doesn't stop growing until it's twenty four, I believe. Or, yeah. but yeah. I I had a relationship which I got into at 20, about 20 years old. And um, I didn't know any different. So when she decided to walk out, um, that's uh, essentially, that's when I just hit the fuck it button. And am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, that's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I hit the fuck it button. And I was just like, I didn't know how to deal with grief, and now I had I've had parent um, grandparents pass away, but that was such a young age that I did, it didn't make make much of an impact on me. However, when this did, I didn't know how to deal with it. So what I did deal, how I did deal with it, was booze and drugs, and I'd never touched a class A drug until I was thirty one, but not knowing that the 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 worst drug I was doing was booze. You know, yeah, that has the biggest impact on on us as a, as a um society and you know police ambulance etc which we'll probably get into but yeah that that was my journey which which were like fuck it, it was like what do i do now i don't have a uh, I, I suppose i looked at it as a failed relationship which uh, you know it depends which way you look at it but at the time i suppose for me it was just a it wasn't a failed relationship it was just a relationship that ran its cause which i can look yeah, at yeah. now it, which i can look at now and because the work we do and the work we've done on ourselves, I'm be like, well, I'm I'm really super grateful because I wouldn't be talking to you today if I hadn't yeah. been through that journey. So I suppose that's where it started was like f about probably seven seven odd years ago when she walked out on me. I thought, for shit, what, what what do I do? And yeah, I, it's difficult. Like trying to find your feet. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I was just like the 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 easiest and simplest thing would do, and that and that is exactly it. That's all I chose was the simple outs was to get fucked every weekend. I moved back to my parents, and and literally that's how it started. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was it was pretty 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 brutal that I hadn't gone through the grief, but this was like the start of have for I suppose wanky as it may sound, but start of like finding myself, but I had to go for a lot of fucking hardship, not a lot of hard times to find out who I really am, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those where you'll never find it in the bottle, bottle but it's many kind of people's go to. I mean, I, we spoke on the phone and, and I said, you know, it's one of them things when I joined Paul Moore, I'd come out of a 15 year marriage and never been a drinker because I'd grown up around alcohol so it was never a road that I didn't I didn't want to go down that road but I noticed I was drinking like more and like every weekend like not to a point where I got a problem but it was not me yeah you know and at the time I wasn't brain coaching so I didn't know about that but it was it's so easy to get caught in that trap yeah I, I just thought that um I, I just got caught in the, the the fact that everyone around me was not, not my parents. I've, I've never been big drinkers, but everyone like all my friends and my social circle were drinkers. And every mm. weekend that would be what connected us and what made us, I, I suppose what made us social was, was that, but, but, but then the drugs got involved and, and, and like, Cocaine is so antisocial because you're either in the toilet and the same with booze to an extent. If you're, I spoke about it with Paul on, on my podcast, but if you're at a social event like a gig or a football match or, and you're constantly chasing the booze and which I did, like I'm missing half the game. I'm not, I'm going in the toilet. You know, I'm in the toilet if I'm doing gear, I, you know, I, I, all of this and I'm, I'm choosing that over what is a, a great event or a great sports yeah or, or a good football match and I'm choosing to do that yeah as, as opposed to like yeah fo focus on it and 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 that's how I, I just got sucked in and I was chasing because I wasn't doing anything for myself the weeks were just a, a culmination of getting through till it's the weekend again yeah, that's it. So when did it start to change for you? When did you start to go, right, okay, this isn't me and I don't want this? Yeah, so th th there was, I mean, th yeah, for me, it, it was mainly in lockdown, like just just before lockdown, I met my now girlfriend, Zoe, and it wasn't that she, like, I was, she, and we, we were both still boozing when we met and we did go on like a, a UK trip when we met that um when yeah that was quite boozy however like in lockdown I, I I there was one day and I always remember it like looking in the mirror and I'm like and I've got a picture of it and it's just like of me looking in the mirror thinking fuck I've got fat and like I don't like that person looking back at me now it's obviously the the booze had made my skin like really shit as well. Like, mm. um, I, th that's the, one of the biggest things I've noticed that I, ha I had really bad acne as a kid anyway. But like now I'm like, and then I, yeah. So like I, that was that was probably the start. But then I, like the biggest thing was I, I decided in 2021 I was like, okay, cool. I'm going on holiday in March. Let's get in. Let's get to March. Without having a without boozing and see what shape I can get into body wise, like yeah, bit bit of vanity, but like egotistical. But then I then I was going good and momentum started to happen, and I was like, oh, this is this is all right, you know. I started, I did like I started at Paul's ninety day course then, so which is um which was like, oh yeah, that was going good. So every like, momentum building, so I was like, oh, this is great. Then I had a massive sort of row with the missus she we'd both gone out together i'd never met this 
friend of hers who uh, we were meeting that night. She'd already been on this like booze in London. She'd come back and I was completely sober because I wasn't drinking till the March. And we we went out and she was getting irate, like getting louder and louder and louder, of which I used to do when I was pissed. And I was like, and I she was like turning into someone that I hadn't ever seen before. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, and I was like, so I was like, fuck. If she's be- and like she was putting herself in danger, like running into the road and things like that. And I'm like, fuck, if she's doing that, what I'm probably just as bad, if not worse, than this. Anyway, we had a massive row. And then in the morning, I just said to her, I'm not doing this ever again. I'm not drinking ever again. And for for her to like have that impact was it 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 was it was obviously boiling up inside me of like mm. booze is not serving me whichever way and it was obviously bo- boiling up inside me and then I was like fuck that was it so from that January I haven't drunk now and I'm what now 12 uh, yeah 1200 nearly three and a half years but do you know what hats off to you mate like literally like you've just made a choice and you've just gone for it yeah which may- Many people don't make that choice. They don't get to that point. You know, they just carry on. And it's so sad. With In the industry that you work in, have you noticed there's more people now drinking since COVID? Yeah. There was a, there was a crazy stat, which I, I saw the other day. There's, there's more alcohol-related deaths since COVID than, than, than ever. But on the flip side, because I, I suppose there's also... It's, it's a difficult situation because there's also a lot of people who are going sober. I don't know if it's like a fad because for me, obviously it's definitely not, but a lot of people seem to have jumped on it and been like, I'll give this alcohol free, go free thing, mm. a go, which is great. And it's more of like a trend with the celebrities, but which is, which is amazing. But there's also, there's also such an underlined issue still were in a way there you know and I get messages on the daily saying I'm struggling with life and again as I was but that's the only way they see out is 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 to booze or do drugs or or, or both <laughs> no, yeah. nine times out of ten um and the, the biggest struggle is though is like it's not our response. It's not. It's not your fault that you're addicted to a substance that is made to be addictive. Yeah. However, it is your responsibility to do something about it. The the interesting thing I've found is that people will say to me, uh, "Your coaching is expensive," or whatever. And then I've like I had a comment on like a free something I was giving away free, and they they were like, "What's it going to cost me?" My response to it, because sometimes I get a bit irate, because I'm like, well, what's it going to cost you to stay the same? And I think that's the thing. That's the thing. I I asked the question is like, well, it it, would have cost me my life, right? If I wouldn't have made that change, it would have cost me my life. It already cost me a lot of money, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of all the above. And like, which I've had to undo, I've had to unpick up, you know, that, and that's cost me like thousands of therapy, or what, whatever it may be. I, and, and it's not about the money, it's, it's irrelevant. It's whether you feel it's valuable. And like for me, yeah. you can't, you can't put a, you can't put a price on health, right? Absolutely. And it's one of those things, I mean, I've seen obviously our, our work brain wise, but you, you see all these figures coming out, our Alzheimer's is going up. You know, our things like um, heart disease, m- uh, mental health, yeah, I saw like that. liver disease, like the whole thing is going up. And you have to sit there and think, right, okay, so we was isolated in COVID. So that was a big one. But it's like in COVID times, it was like I was seeing people doing like drinking games to see who could drink the fastest pint of vodka and whatever it was. Yeah. And then tagging other people in to do it. The amount of people that I saw having like a photo with a selfie with a glass of wine for breakfast because they yeah. could, it was absolutely shocking. Yeah, I, it was like, how the hell did we get like that? And, and I also think as well, like that there, there was still 
there are still drug dealers doing business in, in COVID, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they weren't wiping down their packets. Do you know, part of the <laughs> but they, do you know what I mean? They weren't. And, and, and the scary thing is, is 90, you know, people who are single were probably doing that at home. So yeah, yeah. that's, you're building up like a, a routine. It's like, how the fuck do I break free from that? You know, and, and I, I, I think that, you know, something that we're trying to do, uh, I thought at the time to better my mental health was was actually fucking damaging the fuck out of it. Yeah, Absol- yeah, and it, and it, and it's obviously the figures show that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. We we'd gone, you know, people were used to going out to drinking. So when we were locked down and people got comfortable drinking from home, it then starts to become the norm. But I know we spoke about addiction because you see people that are heavy drinkers or, you know, possibly like just drink at weekends, you know, finish work on a Friday and go, right, I have had a hard week at work and then they start drinking. What defines an addict where alcohol is concerned? Yeah, that's a great question. Like, and like, if you looked at the NHS or the World Health Organisation or whatever it may be, I think it's designed, like they recommend set units for women set units for men but the the, the god's honest truth is like <laughs> i may get shot for this but there's no there's no there's no there's no picture next to next to something that says you're an addict or you're not also like i would consider myself as a gray area drinker but again which which means somewhere in, in the middle but but again where it's such a, a it's such a gray area to, to where you where you draw the line you know mm. like to to someone the typical analogy is like having having vodka on your on your cornflakes like but but for me an addict is someone who relies on it, whether it be booze drug sex food, gambling, etc., is someone who, who relies on something and can't and doesn't have the ability to give it up. That's yeah, yeah. my opinion. So yeah, yeah. if if I can because there's a lot of people that go, oh well, well I'll only drink on the weekend. But if that's every weekend and that's boot binging and it's taken away from your life, I'd say I'd still say that's an an addiction why right? because you can't yeah, yeah. not not go f- not, for a weekend yeah. yeah 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 so it's something so, you just can't stop isn't it like yeah. yeah so and i think the word addict can it has like can have detrimental like to your mental side of it because i wouldn't have classed myself as an addict but again i need i felt like i needed booze every weekend to yeah make me feel better yeah yeah that's that's gone a, a, an addict to it you, you know what i mean so th- th- it's such a it's such a taboo word kind of thing but yeah i'm like i had i've had clients who 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 it, it, again they, they don't class themselves as that because again i think it's that they, they you're expecting and I think maybe George spoke about this as well. You're expecting an addict, inverted commas, to be someone on a park bench, surrounded by needles, surrounded by booze, surrounded by whatever it may be. And that's not what a fucking typical addict, like an addict looks like. That, it's just like, it looks like me or it looks like, do you know what I mean? It's not like I was someone who wanted to use it alcohol and drug. Well, alcohol is a drug. Oh, you're using drugs every weekend. To to increase my life state, you know, make me yeah, feel yeah. like give me that dopamine to make me feel better. Was I an addict? I, I don't. I honestly don't know because uh, I don't. I, I suppose it's such a it's, a, it's such a blurred non-spe- lines. Yeah, yeah, it's a non-specific word, isn't it? Yeah, because you'll often hear people say, "No, no, I haven't got a problem because." I'm, I still go to work and I still do this and I'm quite high functioning when reality is a lot of people that have got a problem can still be quite high functioning just because you're able to go to work in the week doesn't mean that you are 
like far away from being an addict, which I find bizarre. People have got a a very strange view of themselves and how reliable that like they are on alcohol and drugs. It's quite strange. Like it's yeah. almost like an excuse, isn't it? Yeah, we hear it all the time. Yeah, but I still yeah. manage to quit and I still get up on time and it's a weird, weird mindset. I and I've I've questioned that with my clients. Like if you're considering yourself as high functioning Imagine what you could do if you you were actually high functioning, because yeah. the, the 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 difference with a high fun you know, I can tell you now, I was functioning. I was never fucking high functioning. The like the the the, it's the tolerance level, the base level you're feeling when you're drinking that much and consuming that much drugs. The base level just goes. You get a you're just feeling a bit shit. You're not feeling awful, dreadful, but there are days when you feel dreadful, you're just feeling a bit shit. My base level now is fucking, is is like, it's good, but yeah. I can go really fucking good. But I don't, I don't think, and all I ever got in that was like a 15 minute, and that when I was really fucking good with booze or, or gear, it was only, a, it's only, and this is what I try and tell my clients, it's only fleeting. It's only a, a 15 minute buzz. And that even, this is quite apt because, you know, I've got the brain guru on. The the dopamine you get from wine is even before you take a fucking sip. So you don't even yeah. have to need, you, you don't even have to have the sip. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. so I think that, what so uh, again massively off fucking topic i'm like um I but yeah <laughs> but what i'm what i suppose what i was getting at is is, is that um the high functioning is, is complete bullshit um yeah. i i i ch- like i i wear these whoop the whoop band that tells me about my recovery and it's, it's been helpful yesterday it told me i was dog shit recovery which is expected i'm just run a fucking marathon however i've seen people's recovery after having one wine one glass of wine and the impact that's had on them is fucking crazy and that's just one glass of wine and these people that are telling me because i've had it as well amy like i've had a lot of people say well abc can function on one glass well, like drinking every night no they fucking can't they're just no. they're just telling you they can because and you're You'll only see when they do function well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sorry, I went on a fucking world no, no, rant. I, 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 <laughs> I, I think I like so. Like I said, I don't drink now, and I think society is very strange. So I've actually been out before, and somebody's offered to buy me a drink, and when I've said no, they've automatically think that I'm recovering from an addiction. Like society is so messed up in that way where drinks concerned but do you think people panic about stopping drinking because of looking boring fear of missing out people kind of looking at them funny because we are a bit it's like i say society is weird like that yeah i think that's the the biggest the biggest driver behind a lot of my clients why they go back to booze is mm. their fear of missing out, but like I just uh, uh, again, it's, it's it's on them. But I just kind of like flip it and be like, okay, so what are you actually missing out on? Because after ten, I think I spoke to you about this before. After ten, nothing good happens, and after, especially after twelve, you'll hear the same people saying the same shit. <laughs> all the time talking about like their fights they've had as, at school or the, the people that, the, you know, especially with lads, the birds they've shagged or whatever it may be. And to be honest, like if you're missing out on that, then fuck what I'm not missing out on is fear, shame, regret, guilt, money. i fucking spent. I, I had to have three, three and a half grand for gum resurgery. I, I've, sordid nights out all this shit i'm not missing out on that i'm what i i'm in and i think that you have to have to have to regain it i'm not mm-hmm. missing out i'm gaining so much fucking more and that's the 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 the, 
the shift they have to have is like, what are you gaining? Not what you're fucking missing out because you're gaining time, energy, clarity, weight loss, money gain, fucking more memories created with friends, family. Yeah, all this. And 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 yeah. to be able to understand that is like, because the, the, the thing that I've found is, is like my social circles obviously got a lot, lot, lot smaller. But the social circle that I have and, and the, the the circles all the way around, like I went to fucking, I, I, well, you went, you climbed with Adam and like Adam, such a, like Adam made me do a, um made me jump. It, like, this is such a random story, but I, I'm going somewhere with this. But, Ad, but this is what I'm saying. You, you're around amazing people. So Adam chose basically when we we're in Mike's gym, he he said to me to jump on this thing. And, and I was like scared, shit scared of heights. And I did it and I did it and I did it again. There's like four different jumps. Anyway, since then I've created a, a, a bond with Adam where I've gone for a run with him. I've been for food with him. I went, he, he, he invited me to Stephen Bartley with him. Like it's, it might, and he doesn't drink, but, and our, my social circle and my events look different now. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying, I suppose, is is like it's surrounding yourself with different people. That if you're surrounding yourself with these people who are all, always on the session, on the gear, or whatever they may be, you're going to get sucked back in quite soon. And yeah, yeah. willpower has an expiry date, so so no will only last a certain amount of time. Because if you get if you sit in the hairdressers long enough, you'll get your fucking hair cut. Same prior to going to the pub, right? You, if you go into the sit, I don't go to the pub much anymore. I find it quite boring because, again, like I said, it's the same people saying the same shit over and over again. But if I do go to the pub, I'll go for a couple and then, you know, I'll go for a couple of non alcoholics and then fuck off. Or if you can't meet someone for a coffee instead, are they really your mates? I don't know, but yeah, and if that, you can't say no, that's that's what I was sorry. That's that, again, that, 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 that's it. It's like that you can you can stop drinking, and then one of your mates will say, "But do you go out right, just have one?" But yeah. it's like, why would why would you even say that? Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. Said, I said to you, I'd gone to an event um, a couple of weeks ago, and I drove just so I didn't have to go. No, I'm I'm not drinking, thank you. Now people look at me strange, yeah, because like, it does make you feel uncomfortable. It's like yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. But I want to get on to like, things like the NHS and the government because I know we had a great chat about this and we agreed on so much. So you yeah. hear about NHS struggling, like waiting times for like operations, like A&E waiting times like at all Crazy. time. Yeah. And like you say, the, the government know that alcohol is and like George George says more dangerous than some drugs out there. Like it's the number one killer. As a brain coach, I know that it doesn't kill brain cells, but it disconnects the neurons, which is probably worse if I'm being honest. Yeah. Because we can grow new brain cells, but we can't reconnect neurons. So it's it's massive. Now I said to you, you would have thought with all these health implications going up, and a lot of them tied to alcohol as well. I mean alcohol shrinks the brain as well so yeah, there's exactly. why the government don't do anything about it i mean there's there's a i'm not saying it's an easy fix but there's no warnings on any alcohol no government warnings at all no and and i think it, they were trying to bring that in in ireland i believe they're trying to make it a bit like cigarettes um the thing is the government gets so much money from the tax of alcohol and there's a guy, I, I believe it's Professor David Nutt. He done a, he done a, he actually wrote a, um, a letter to the government about how dangerous alcohol is. But that never got published, or or, or something happened. It's in his book. It's an incredible book. I think it's science of. It's called the Science of Booze. I got it over there. But it's, it's because they get so they got so much tax out of the same with cigarettes, and and obviously they're now. I mean, cigarettes, not many people smoke now, and it's, it's, it's a decline of that. I do see being a decline slowly within the alcohol industry, but it, it, it I think I said to you offline, like, 
if I said to you, right, we're going to we're gonna bring a drug in that's linked to seven different cancers, it causes Alzheimer's, shrinks your brain, it, it completely fucks your mental health. And do you know what? You're going to have to pay for it. And the next day, you're going to feel like absolute shit. How would that? How would that now get get past anything? But because yeah. because it's such a special place in our hearts and our our society, it's still it's still rife and it's still allowed and it's still glamorized. It's still you know there's still boozy brunches. There's still there's still bottom yeah like bottomless brunches. There's still there's still adverts. It's a, it's a bit like gambling. I'm. It's a bit like gambling as well. There's still loads of loads of gambling adverts um, out there as well. Like these things are ruining our lives. Yeah. But the 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 people at the top just turn a fucking blind eye because yeah, there's, there's bigger things on their agendas and bigger things that yo. Know, like I said to you, if you go in, you go. To A and E on a Friday and Saturday night, and see what havoc is in there. The police have to be in it. Like it's, I think it's something like six billion pounds. Yes. Cost to the, mm-hmm. Like that's with policing, ambulances, all the above. And that's not to say about you know like the, the daily fuck it, the relationships it fucks up. You know, uh, you can go on and on. The jobs you lose. You know, the people lose their jobs. The people lose yeah. their livelihoods people lose their fucking houses you know i was close to fucking like ending it all because of that's how uh, and that was through booze and drugs and that i thought that would relieve all my anxiety and depression but it just fucking catapulted me down into the ground so yeah the sorry the nhs and the fucking like they're under so much pressure the wait times are fucking crazy. And then what happens is we pile that on every, I, I'll be honest, I hold my hands up. I went to A&E on a Sunday after a Saturday. I haven't said this on any other podcast on a Saturday because I was that fucked. I ran into a wall. This is how fucking crazy it was. And then next morning I couldn't even do my shoelaces up because I was that fucked the night before I just ran into a wall. And I was like, but I thought that was a great idea of fun. Like, and I, I did an email about it today. How crazy is it that you measured your night out on how shit you felt the next day? Yeah. Well, that that's it. I mean, you, we talk about the prefrontal cortex. Like, if you take drink or drugs, like, that just goes offline anyway. So whatever decision you make when they get like, yeah. pistoled, it's never going to be a great one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it just, but I will flip it about like the government because i think us as people we are quick to moan about the government we are quick to moan about the nhs but we are drinking ethanol that is a poison to our yeah. bodies so we are funding the government yeah, and we are. we are making the nhs backlogged yeah and we we still don't stop why don't people wake up yeah cuz it's it's like it's such an addictive it's such an addictive drug. Mm. And and like I said to you before, like it's not your fault that you're addicted to it. It's it's made to be addictive. And we spoke about it before. Like when we were growing up, we had hooch, we had we had yeah. WKD, we had Smirnoff Ice, we had all these, and they were built, they were marketed to us because they were like fruit juices. They were also like like colors were all ahead. And that's why I said to you as well. Now vapes are all in brightly colored, all taste nice or whatever that yeah. like fancy taste, you know, like fucking strawberry blast or whatever. I can't, I only saw it on a TikTok clip, you know, like strawberry blast or cool, whatever. And they're all like glamorized and, and marketed to be fucking like sold to youngsters and like that's how our our brain growing up was like oh these are these taste great they make me feel a bit like an adult and oh like they change who i am 
yeah. more confident, more like whatever you feel that you need. So more confident, better looking, because it doesn't make you better looking. But obviously, this is my little brain. More confidence, better looking, funnier. These are all the things that were going from my brain that that drug gave me. Yeah. So that's why I feel that it's so addictive because and fucking cheap. Like, yeah. how yeah. cheap is it? Like, I mean, obviously it's going up and in fucking London, it's about, you. Just, even for a non-alcoholic beer, it's £7, which is ridiculous. However, the, 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 the thing is, it's so cheap. You know, like cider, you can get for like three quid a bot. You know, white lightning or whatever. When we were young, and and that's why it's so cheap and accessible. That's why I don't think. I think we're still struggling. That's. Yeah. I think that's the that's the crux of it all, really, isn't it? Like if yeah. we're struggling because of it's so cheap and accessible. Then why why would you stop? Yeah, and it's what alcohol is one of them things. I was on about it earlier to a friend. It's like you could literally come up with a excuse every single day to have a drink. Like you, yeah. you do it for, for going out. You could like for, for clubbing. If you go out for a meal, it's a meal and a drink. If you've had a stressful day at work, you could yeah. have a drink. If you've had bad news, you could go and have a drink. Like the list of things that could happen in a day. You could have multiple things throughout the day yeah. where you could go, oh, I, I could have a drink. It's weird. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, it's our go to for every single life event challenge. Yeah. And especially if you're, uh, obviously, I mainly deal with men, but especially if you're a mum, it, it's it's like the mummy culture now of like booze, like I said, booze, booze bottomless brunches. Um, you know, drinks with the girls or oh, fucking little Harry's been a twat today. Like I'll, I'll have, a, yeah. I'll have, a, I'll have a glass of wine. Uh, you know, like we'll we'll meet with the, the ladies who've just been given. But yeah, whatever it may be, you're right. It's just like it's quite a um, it's quite a it's toxic like today. culture. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's sunny. been nice and sunny here today, and yeah, they yeah, yeah. said, "Oh, it's beer garden weather." Yeah, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine, and, and it's only, I, I feel it's only the British culture to do that. Like, yeah. imagine, like, just, it's, it's fucking got hot. It, it, a bit of sun's out. And what we'll do is go to, go to the fucking a beer garden and get shit-faced. And, and, <laughs> and look, that was me three years ago. I was exactly the same. In fact, I, I didn't need a fucking excuse. It was Thursday was my excuse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's the fuck. That's the god's honest truth. It's like fuck. It's Thursday. I, I deserve yeah. a beer. I, I, you know, since when have I fucking deserved to treat my body like shit, and and my mental health like shit? And that, and yeah. I think that's the thing, isn't it? You you can't look at the picture. You can't look at the. You can't look at the picture when you in the frame or the other way around. You can't look. Basically, if you're involved in it all. The moment you step take a step back out, which I did, then I was like, "Yeah, this this booze thing don't fucking work out, does it? I'm paying yeah. to be, I'm paying to feel shit. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's it. You are paying to to be shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you know what I think? Um, you said something about your nephew as well because I wanted to get on. Obviously, me growing up around it and being in a relationship where it was a problem you don't realize at the time how much it's affecting other people so now have you realized your relationships close to you have got so much better as well yeah like my my, my relationships are quite tight um and obviously when I went for a bit of shit with the with with the divorce um I was like ah oh, fuck yeah um you do realize after that happens, then like who who gathers around, who who's there to help, and then and then next step was giving up booze. And then my relationship changed again because a lot of people decided to that that wasn't for them. Like I, I wasn't their friend because they didn't drink because I didn't drink, and that's cool. But yeah, like especially like you touched upon, especially with my nephews. They see they've always, always, always seen me as the fun nephew, which is fucking amazing. And it 
it it tears me up most days. It like it gets me fucking going. It really does. Like I've I've and I've always wanted kids, and and I'm trying for kids now. Like all this shit gets me excited. Um, and there's no greater feeling than having them by my side, whether it be whatever. But <clears throat> but that that role model behavior and that relationship has fucking got stronger. But it, it started with them drawing a card with me like slumped over the table saying happy Christmas. And that was the image they were seeing me and, and as, as like a drunk, as, as, as a drunk person and, and, a, and, a, and that wasn't fun for me. <laughs> that, that may have been fun for them because it's like, Oh, Marcus is always drunk. Or, and, and that was their, trust me, like they're so pr impressionable and, and they're now like 11 and 13 but even back then, that was like four, five, six years ago, that was so impressionable. And I'm like, fuck, because I, and even to my dad, like recently, he's like, how do you get on a plane now? Because my attitude was, I get to the airport like three hours before. It's always, it's five, I think we spoke about it, it's a flying, it's five o'clock somewhere. I'll have a boot, I'll have a beer. And I, I think now, like, and I'm not, it's not my, it's not my job, but it, it feels like, it's completely switched around me. And like, I'm almost like seen as like the, the rock of the family and like the, the person who's like really got their shit together. And I haven't, and none of us have, but that all comes from like a clear, a clarity of not boozing. But to answer your question, the, 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 the relationships that have with my nephews and my relationship with my, my girlfriend and my sister, they've completely, and I suppose, and my mum and dad, they've completely got improved since I've uh, gone booster. And, and my, and my, I suppose the, the impact I knew it was hap happening was this Christmas, whereas I went to my parents for Christmas Day, and everyone, 90% of the people around the table, other than my mum and dad, which is I'm cool with anyway, because they don't really booze, had alcohol-free drinks. And I'm like, and obviously my nephews do because they're, they're having fucking war or whatever. But I was like, fuck that. I, yeah. four years previous to that, I, as a picture on my Instagram, I was drinking Buck's Fizz at quarter past, I think it's quarter past eight, quarter past nine, but, but cheersing it and sending that to my friends because I thought it was fucking good. So that's the, that's the difference. And, and I, my, my nephews now, like I said, they run with me. Like my, I run the marathon and, and my nephew come run by the side of me a couple of times when I saw them each stops. I run London mini marathon with him. Like I've taken both of them to Fort Park the other year, like completely like VIP access to everything. Like that, that memory of that Fort Park, seeing their faces just fucking like, it, it makes me emotional now talking about it because I've that that Fort Park trip is one of the best days of my life, and and that yeah, that shit makes me happy, and that that's the relationship I have with them, and they just like their little faces it's telling me they love me and doing that. It's just whew, like even yeah, this really even this year, what have I done with them this year? Yeah, I've taken to like Ninja Warrior, I've taken to. Uh, Bear grills, you know, and they, they just make me want to be better, you know, and and, yeah. and I suppose that's where I've gone again, that's... massively off track, but yeah, no, 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 Do you know what, that's, <laughs> that's really powerful. Um, because I think uh, Chris Sheehan shared a post a couple of weeks ago about being in a supermarket, and a little girl had said, it, like, it was about four years old, I can't wait to get home, I've had a stressful day to get some Prosecco, like, copying a mum, and I think. And you just realise that kids are like sponges. Yeah. And if you are showing them, say you're drinking if you are stressed, like obviously her mum was, that little yeah. girl's growing up to go, right, okay, so when we're stressed, we do that. That's what we do. We reach for alcohol. And it's yeah. just, I think, where alcohol and drugs are concerned, I think you are that far inwards that you can't see what's happening. To yeah. the people around you and what they're seeing and what they're learning about what you are, like, yeah. you can, like people are completely oblivious, which is 
quite sad, I think, because I think if if people could actually tell how they're impacting other people, like you did, luckily you had that card drawn for you. Yeah. Because otherwise 100%. you would have had no idea. No, no, know? no. Uh, yeah, I, I also like you, you're you're hundred percent spot on. I, I I see, I think I mentioned you uh, the other day, and you see other people, and other I, like I've been to social events recently, where like people's mums and dads are, are more boozy, and and they're at this even at the social event that we, you know, it wasn't a big boozy event. It was just like a chilled afternoon event. And the, the kids of the parents that drink the most didn't get involved. They were reserved. They were more, um, they were more, yeah, they, they, they were just, and, and I don't know if that says, but that's, I, I, I don't know. It, it, and I'm not saying they don't, they're not loved and that's not what I'm saying at all. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is it, it seems to be that maybe that because of their parents' attitude with the booze that they see that as like they're reserved. They don't do anything. I'll do the same. And it, it's, it's sad, massively it's sad, a, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely learned behavior. 100%. So you want a program. Tell me about that because I know you're doing amazing things for people. Yeah. So it's a 12 week program. Like it's called Boost to Better. Um, and the same as my podcast, it's called Boost to Better. Um, so basically it takes them through 12 weeks of um, how, where they're at, understanding where they're at and where they want to be at. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, I suppose the, the toughest thing is sometimes people come to me and be like, okay, so I want to be able to, I've had it. I've definitely had, I was like, I want to be able to um, moderate. And I, I think that's the biggest myth going is it's being, and like I said to you before, it's being able to moderate. So it's taking them through like understanding that like the, the different weeks is like, being understand like for us we know the power of journaling so it's, it's setting a journal so also like it, getting to know your subconscious brain of like what will i turn to today if i fancy a drink so whether that's be call marcus whether that be listen to a podcast whether that be go out for a walk because the distraction is great right i was hungry earlier i wasn't hungry i wanted a chalk i wanted something sweet earlier i knew that if i diverted that for enough like five minutes I, I haven't i haven't had that chocolate now so it's understanding that as well like right at the start setting goals understanding that because if you're bored and have nothing to live for or live nothing to focus on yeah guess what guess what to do the easiest thing is to drink and forget about anything we're humans are meant to hunt something we're meant to go after something and if you're not doing that you're probably stuck in the past or you're probably focused on the instant gratification, whether that be scrolling, but through obviously people come to me, that'd be boozing. So it's understanding that. Um, fucking hell, I'm really selling it here and I'm doing well. Um, so then, <laughs> so then it's then understanding triggers, getting to know uh, like, um, like social occasion, FOMO, all in a 12 week program, helping them go through, um, also their triggers understanding what why they drink right because yeah yeah we can like i didn't know until i stopped and i didn't realize it till the other week when you said about when i think people are mentioned to me did you have an issue before the the the, the divorce and i'd say i did all, all i wanted to drink for before was to get fucking wasted and to be like comedian. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's understanding why they drink, it's their habits. Um, and, and basically at the end of it, you know, it's more of a, it's a mindset shift and mindset program and to helping them understand, um, like, like I said, social, there's social occasions. There's loads, there's loads of different bits in there to understand also like that, again it's not it's not their fault while they're doing it but it is their responsibility to get a handle on it and and yeah. you know i've had some incredible success and a couple of blips with some of them but but it's getting them to understand their blips as well um, yeah, yeah and they get 
uh, they get 24 say 24 so they get like access to me and and they can like because i think for for a lot of the people in the program that i've had the planned nights out are much easier to deal with than the spontaneous events yeah. mm -hmm. if i said to you right amy we're going out tonight of we're going out friday night we're going to the boxing to see your um partner you know you've already planned that you're driving however mm -hmm. if i said to you tonight we're going to the cinema and then we can go for a meal afterwards without you even knowing and spontaneously that's when i've found that people are more like fuck it oh, i'll just have one or i'll just do that and that's what i'm trying to get them to, to rethink be okay. and re yeah. yeah and rethink and be like okay i don't need one it's a it's a tuesday night it's this also just to have a little bit of like ah oh, oh, they call it surf the urge as well like whether that be food whether that be you know binge yeah like binge eating whether anything like that like it's surfing the urge and being like Oh, I'm okay off like I did earlier. Like it's I'm okay now. I don't I don't need that chocolate. I don't need that beer. I don't need that yeah. whatever it may be. I love the fact that you're like <laughs> thinking about their futures because I think <clears throat> like you mentioned instant gratification as well, which I think is a big problem in society as a whole at the moment yeah. because the world is so easy, you know, everything's available at click of a button, everything, you know, everything's instant that people don't look to their futures like they just they'll get there whether it's fitness whether it's giving up alcohol and it's a healthy eating everybody's about right we need to live now sod what we're like in the future yeah <laughs> very odd isn't it 100 percent. do you i've got i've got a question to ask you which came up earlier and i said i'll, I'll ask you do you ever find somebody that's gone right okay so i'm drinking i'm going to stop drinking I'm going to sort my mindset out. But then they start drinking because they'll use the excuse. Well, I was drinking before because it was a problem. Now I haven't got the problem. So it's just like a social drink. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, that's a great question as well. I had that very, very, very recently. Basically, right. I, 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 messaged this, I messaged one of my clients just to see how they're getting on. And like... I leave them, I think I do, better than they've come in with, right? So that you're right. They, I think a lot of, some of them have come in and been like, right, I've got this sorted now. I've got a handle on it. And then because it's an addictive drug and it's fucking sucks you back in, mm. that's why, like, people are going, that's why people, like, <laughs> you it for me especially and and i I've, I've said it to a lot of people is like just say no to the first drink if you say to no to the first drink you you're, you're sound because if you drink the first drink you're you're going to you're automatically going to be like right i need that next dopamine hit in fifth and the that the booze gives you for 15 minutes and then like after that right cool i need the next one and you're always chasing that next one yeah. So for so for me, it's like yes, the the customers come in and 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 it's you still it's like us. It's same with you. It's like if I didn't do what I know works, that's why powerful the power of journaling. Mm. If I know what works, and I carry on doing it, guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have more wind. But if I know yeah. if I know what don't what doesn't work that's by going back to the booze then why would you carry on why would you resort back to it Do you know, and that's what i kind of said to him um and also i just said like yeah half the time <laughs> they just stopped doing the work because it's easy, it's easier not to right yeah I, I i often i thought about it today and i was like well it's like if you've got a heroin addicts and they get over the heroin addiction and they get over the mindset that gave them the heroin addiction and then they turn around and go so i've started taking heroin again but it's fine because i'm not taking it because <laughs> yeah. you know, i'm just taking it because i want to not, I mean, it's the yeah. same kind of thing isn't it yeah it'd be like <laughs> me going back now and going right i've got it handled because i haven't drunk for three and a half years and i'm, I'm in a great great space but what i'll do is ruin my mental health again and, and fuck myself over 
but this time I'm not going to do it because of a breakup. I'm just going to do it because, because, because what? Do you know what I mean? And it is, yeah, yeah. like, it, I think you you knocked the nail on the head earlier. You'll then be like, right, okay, so, oh fuck it, I've and 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 it's not. This is not just. This is not just um, with booze. This could be anything. So this could be porn. This could be fucking food, sex, whatever it may be. But it's it's almost like you you know if you hit the fuck it button, you're like, well, one way, you know, if I've failed, inverted comma, you see it as a lesson. Like, okay, you've got you've slipped back to your old ways. Let's see how we can get back to doing what works yeah. but with a lot of people and and you're right because it's so easy and and so known it's it's the fear of the unknown that's what everyone's scared of and that's why a lot of people don't do the work but it, it it's because it becomes familiar and and also easy you're like okay cool I'll, I'll just start drinking again and and then drinking one becomes drinking seven drinking eight mm -hmm. and the same with food it's like I'll oh, fuck it. I'll start again Monday or I'll start again tomorrow. Yeah, it, tomorrow never fucking comes. So you have to, you have to eliminate, yeah, eliminate the bad, the bad habits. Cause if you, the more you build up good habits, the more it's repeatable, the more, you, as you know, you more, you wire your brain to be like, cool, this is just what I do now. And that's what you, I need, you need to, I think the, the beauty is making you some, statements of like i so for instance if someone asked me now oh would you want to drink like if i'm out and I, no one knows who, that i don't drink no i'm a non-drinker like it's it's easier than than because you know when you dr drink is the only drug you have to give a reason why you don't drink so if i say no um I'm not drinking they'll be like oh why are you pussy or whatever and that's what you get and what you alluded to earlier yeah, so yeah. I think think now, like for people, if you can't think of an excuse, all you have to say is no, I, I don't drink because it fucks my mental health. Like people will <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? People will soon yeah. shut up then. But yeah, like if they're seeing it as boring, whoever it may be, that's on them. It's not on you. And I think that all that's doing is holding a mirror up to themselves, thinking, "Fuck." Yeah, well, I mean, I've. Can do I've, it, I've why I've often thought like when somebody's looked at me a bit funny, I think you know it's it's more about you that you can't have fun when you're out because I'm yeah. absolutely fine and I'm enjoying it without a yeah. Drink. yeah. Well, That's you're a bag of energy. Do you know what I mean? So like <laughs> anyone around you is going to have fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it's very odd society. So obviously, since you've stopped, you've done four marathons. Like, have you obviously your fitness levels? have gone up what else has improved for you like health wise like now so like, i think when we think of future you everybody will bin it off because it's too far in the future so what benefits yeah. have you found like really quickly and i think that's the thing is like you have to give that's why my like if i if i said to you i like, uh, sorry flipping back to the, the quick fix and things like if i said to you right amy we're gonna go for the next 28 days you're gonna go so and, and and that's cool that's brilliant because like dry jan sober october etc um is great but it needs more than that because for after 30 days the god's honest truth is i wanted to fucking give it up anyway as in like i wanted to go back to the booze because you don't automatically feel that benefits right. if you if you look however within 90 days 100 days you have to, like you want a sustained period 30 days for me is great and it's a start but most people, God's honest truth, like and the same for me when when like before I really gave it a go, like dry Jan and sober October, it was like I'll wait till Feb and get fucked and just ruin it anyway. Or like, wait till Oct or November, and do you know what I mean? Re undo the, the sober October's and but for me, <laughs> like oh god, the list is endless. Like my energy, productivity, like like I, I've never ever 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 been like. I owe my life to sobriety, but I've never ever been more like, um, like, uh, 
just the, the chances, like the opportunities. I wouldn't have, would I have started a podcast? Would I have been on a podcast? Would I have, I, you know, I've had Paul on my podcast. That's massive for me. I wouldn't have gone to like these events. Like uh, Newcastle was big for me, like the, the Newcastle event. Like yeah. I, and so it was Marbella and Newcastle, a shift, shift in my mindset there. It has been like, I've gone to these events with our, quarter, our, our quarterlies. Sorry for everyone who doesn't, no, um, but like our coach holds the quarterlies, and then like so the Marbella for me, I got to meet amazing people like Adam, like Chris, like Matt in my account of Bigo, all these amazing people like Lee, um, all these amazing people, and then Newcastle because I've got a bit more name and like I'm more involved in the Alliance and I'm more, I speak more, I, I'm, I'm more out there. I've you know I've done a lot with Luke on his podcast and. Uh, and he's been on mine and I, on, I've been on lives with him and he's gave it. I spoke to his team. I've become more confident of being like, fuck people are starting to know me. People are starting to, uh, I don't know that people appreciate. And I think that's it. Like I'm getting messages from you and get messages from different people going, you inspire me. You do. That. And I suppose I wouldn't have got that if I was still in the, my pit, but, but, but I suppose the biggest thing for me is like, knowing now that I'm doing the right thing by, by me and, and sticking to my values. I know that's quite like, yeah, I'm, I, that I'm actually living my values. That's such a powerful thing. But like in terms of like energy, sleep, sleep, mm. sleep's fucking key. I remember going to my therapist. Like, I, I don't see her no more, but I remember going to her and when I was boozy and drug, I was like, my sleep was all over this shop. It was like four o'clock in the morning. I was waking up, turning the TV on, doing like crazy times. Like, and I had like six months off work, like when I was boozing. Um, I, yeah, like sleep is a massive thing. E like even my sex life, like a hundred percent better. Like it, all of the, you know, my, like I said, my skin, my weight, I have put a bit more weight on because I love my food, but <laughs> I put a bit of that back on, but nowhere near like I look disheveled I, I I just didn't look I didn't really I didn't give a shit about my appearance I didn't give yeah. a shit about anything especially my appearance but now I have like massages I have my hair cut every five weeks I have my beard trimmed I, you know I'll often have a facial I could not give a fuck what I look like but I you know even like like to the point of like, like I said, I let my, my, like my health just deteriorate. And, mm. and I just think that like everything in my life has improved. And that's why I, I carried on to be honest, like that, that March and, and obviously I had that row, but I was like, do you know what? Like there's no downside to, to, to going booze free. And I think that, and I've I spoke about it quite a bit because I think people think I'm I'm preachy and things like that. I I'm I'm one of the massive things for me is like I've always been a fan of dapper laughs. Um and I I had a chance of being a moderator in his men's mental health group, and I'm still a moderator in his men's mental health group called Mates, Men and Their Emotions. And I and I get to chat to Dapper on a daily basis. And I, I've been to backstage at, at his live podcast. I went, I got guest tickets to his comedy show. And like I said, I've spoke with like Paul. He's Paul's been on my podcast. Like only shit like this can happen. Now I'm clear. I'm sober. I, I, I've, I've, I've had, I get to do this. I get to speak to, to mm. you on a podcast that, you know, that you've had absolute savages on. And I like, I suppose it's all like, all of this is just, I feel so grateful to do. And I just can't tell you how, how much it's impacted my life, but yeah, the fitness side of it, like yeah. I've got, like I've run Goggins Challenge, which is like 48 miles and 48 hours. Like, Did you do that? Yeah, like, but oh, that was only <laughs> that was only because like Stephen Kinsella. Do you know him in Alliance? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he done that, 
And now he's got me in four weeks time. I'm flying to his place in Ireland to do a 24 hour challenge where I'm doing like, uh, yeah, it's fucking stupid. Basically we're, for, for, for 24 hours, we're doing like five K run, 10 K bike, 50 press ups, 50 pull ups, something else, something else quite stupid, but as many reps as we can in 24 hours. Like I wouldn't have dreamt of even doing a fucking mile run yeah. when I was, when I was on, on the sesh. And that doesn't, to some people that may sound like hell, but to me, like I'm just growing. And I think that's, that's the key word, isn't it? Like we're all yeah, yeah. like, I've seen you in the last six months go from like, obviously doing amazing to doing like extremely amazing things. And I'm like, fuck, how can I be like that? How can I talk on Paul's stage? How, like you, you've talked on his Alliance stuff. How can I do all this? And the, the God's honest truth is I have to say sober to do all this as well. I love that. And I love the fact that you said there's no downside to being sober. That is, that's powerful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I've got one more question for you that I ask every podcast guest and it always stumps them. I first did this. So this is Javino's question that he fires at people. So when Javino came on the podcast, it's the first question that I asked him and it threw him completely off. I saw off that. That was amazing. It's going to put me off as well because I know what is coming and I'm still, I'm fucking, I don't know what I like about myself. But yeah, hit me with it. Hit me with it. Marcus, <laughs> tell me three good things about yourself, my lovely. See, I, yeah, it fucking stumped me as well. See, I think I'm funny. but So that's one. I, I'm going to go with funny. I'm super caring. And oh, fuck you. Now you got... <laughs> Yeah, funny, caring, and, and. Oh my god, Amy, this is fucking great. Um funny caring. And a great uncle. That yes. is yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. Right. So if anybody wants to learn any more about you or to get help, because I will recommend recommend anybody that's wanting to stop drinking to come and work with you because you've done absolutely amazing so where can people find you online yeah so marcus jones coaching on instagram and facebook my podcast is booze to better um and i have a i have a facebook community called booze to better community as well on the on facebook um but yeah all my details are on the on my instagram so it's probably the best place to find it. it's all in the bio at the top there where you can find me like I said, or dro dro drop me a um, message on any of them. Like, even if you want a free chat, I'm, I'm more than happy to run a few things with you because uh, do you know what? Like my mission is to help men get their shit together because I was in a fucking bad place. I don't want anyone to be in that place, whether it be just a message to say, like if I had a message that, that like at that time saying, look, it's going to be all right. Or do you want a hand? Like d d what's the first step? Do you know what I mean? Or something like mm -hmm. that just yeah just reach out to me because i'd rather see, speak to you and and just give you a, a bit of free advice than, than you suffer in silence that's perfect thank you so much my lovely for being right. such an amazing guest and oh, like I said, thank you it's it's so inspiring to see somebody that's gone do you know what? I don't want this life so i need to do something about it so i know you're going to keep impacting so many people doing this and I can tell that you're passionate about it yeah and I just love seeing your journey so never stop <laughs> amazing thank you so much Amy you're thank such a you. legend thank you so you're I'll see you star. soon see you soon oh you legend <laughs>